Shalom, Shalom. Kahala Yahawa, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash, the bondage of the apostles and elders, great millstone rule well, and salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word and truth and sincerity, in fear, you know? Because that's a lot of, that's something that, you know, young men are missing, you know, is fear. Fear of the Lord, man. And we, you know, and truth be told, you know, we all can have more fear of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, because our guys walking around, you know, aimlessly in their simplicity, you know, and in their pride and arrogance and not really understanding what exactly they have themselves involved in, you know, that everything that they do and say has a consequence, you know, there's a judgment coming behind it, you know, so they're not really being mindful of their actions, man, you know, this is Psalms 111 and 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. You know, so it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wisdom. You know, meaning this is what the element that you have to have to have in order to even begin comprehending the most high, man. You know, and the word fear goes back to the Hebrew Yerah, which means morally reverence, dreadful, exceedingly fearfulness, you know. You know, so and I wanted to harp on that more morally reverence, you know. Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai gave us the commandments, you know, which are our morals in the sight of the nations, you know. So we are supposed to reverence him according to what is right and what is wrong, you know. And what is right is to keep the commandments. That's why the scripture says, them that have good understanding, you know, that keep his commandments. You know, so the ones that have good understanding in the sight of the Lord are keeping the commandments, man. You know. Because knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is better than better than rubies, you know? Better than any type of riches you can obtain in this world. Proverbs 8 and 12 says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. You know, so pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and a forward mouth, meaning speaking great things against the Lord, and which you will do if you're pride and arrogant, the Lord hates it, man. You know, verse 14, it says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. You know, and he, the Lord says this after he told you that he hates pride and arrogancy. Because those that are pride and arrogant don't think that the Lord is strength. You know, they think they, they lean onto their own understanding and think they have wisdom. You know what the Lord is saying? No, I have strength and I have wisdom, you know. By verse 15, by me, kings reign and princes decree justice by me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. You know, and in verse 17, when it says those that seek me early shall find me, you know. Let me look at this word seek. Shachar, which means be early at in task by extension to search for, be times, inquire early, you know, and in order to inquire on something, you know, before someone, you have to what? You have to humble yourself, you know, which is something that those who are pride and arrogant, you know, who are pride and arrogant and evil will not do, you know. So a lot of guys are around here masquerading as if they're submitting themselves to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and they're not, man. Just like this guy, Achan, in, in Joshua, the 6th and 7th chapter, man. You know, the knowledge was an understanding is, is uh, better than rubies and gold. But he decided to be covetousness and choose the riches of this world over Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, and what he told him to do, you know. In his mind, he was really a wretched man, you know. This is Joshua chapter 6, verse 18. It says, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. You know, so the Lord was saying, like, look, matter of fact, I'm going to go back up to verse 16. It says, and the city shall be accursed, even it, talking about Jericho, and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messages that we sent. You know, so 
the Lord is a just power, man. He's he spared Rahab and her family because she helped she helped Israel, man. So you can't say that the Lord isn't fair. You know, the Lord gives you your chance. You know, he gives you a choice to make. And whether you make the right or the wrong one depends on your spirit, man. It says, and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, you know. So if you take, take if you take this accursed thing, you're going to make the whole nation of Israel a curse, man. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord, you know. So all the good and silver that we took from Jer from the from the uh, Canaanites in Jericho, you know, we're supposed to be given to the treasury of the Lord. Why? For things like, you know, the homeless, for the widows, you know, for the fatherless, you know, for the poor. And that was basically part of Israel's welfare system at that time, you know. And that's all you had to do. But this guy, Achan, man, he took everything for himself, only thinking about himself, you know, but not thinking that he was going to be destroyed, that there was a consequence and a judgment coming behind what he did, you know. This comes from not fearing the Lord. This is Joshua 7 and 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And, you know, so he took of the accursed thing, and the Lord was angry with us, man, because of that, especially when he told us specifically not to do that. And he did it anyway, man. Not fearing, not understanding the, the true judgment that he was going to have coming up the pipeline, man. You know? And not understanding that the Spirit is always going to find you out. You know? Always going to find you out. So there's, and he thought nobody was looking at him, you know? But the Lord sh show you that, look, the Lord is always watching, man. You know? This is Joshua 7 and 15. And it shall be. That he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. You know, so that judgment was to be burned with fire, man, because he wrung folly in Israel. You know, and you can't have that type of spirit amongst us, that covetous, disobedient spirit, man. And because he disobeyed, what does scripture say about disobedience, man? Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know, so not only did he disobey, and do what he was told not to, he rebelled, you know? So basically, he did witchcraft. And if he was to stay alive, other Israelites would think that they can get away with the same thing, man. It's like a cancer that needs to be cut out of the body. Verse 16, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, Give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord, power of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done, hide it not from me. You know, so the Spirit found him out, man. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord, power of Israel, and thus, and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils of goodly Babylon his garment, and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. You know, so he thought it was a quick opportunity to get rich, man. You know, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hidden the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. So he didn't think about anything but himself, man. He didn't think about the whole nation of Israel becoming a curse. He didn't think about basically stealing, you know, from the Lord. And like scriptures say, will a man rob God? You know, that's basically what he did, you know. Matter of fact, let me get that. It's Malachi 3 and 8. It says, will a man rob the most high? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You know, and that's exactly what Akan did. He robbed the most high of tithes and offerings, you know, being selfish and not fearing the Lord, man, and not fearing what the Lord could do to him, you know. Verse 9 says, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, 
even this whole nation. And that's exactly what Akkad did. Akan did. He robbed the Lord and he robbed the whole nation, man. This is why he, he received the judgment that he got, man. You know? It says, verse 23, And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them into the Joshua and unto the children of the Lord and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Akan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. So now he stole, you know, that little bit of chump change, that silver and that gold. And now they, the Lord, you know, took everything that he had from them. And Joshua said, why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day, you know. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones, you know. So they put him to death, man, right before the congregation, before everybody, you know, because you can't have that type of spirit of rebellion in Israel, man. That's teaching other people to do the same thing, you know. That's why you have to nip problems like that in the bud, you know. And guys like that, that only worry, worry about themselves and they don't fear the Lord and and fear any consequences, they're going to get dealt with too, man, in the same manner, you know. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. You know, this is why exactly we uh, we, we persuade men, man, you know, because we we watching and re watching, I mean, reading, <laughs> we reading and envisioning stories like that, you know, sparks fear in our hearts, man, you know, in our spirits, you know. Because the Lord can destroy us at any second based off of what on one decision that wasn't sound, man. This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 11. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. You know, and let me go into that word terror here. Strong. Strong's G, 3767. Un. Un. Oh, that is the wrong word. Slakia. Phobos, what I was looking for. Strong's G, 5401. Phobos. Phobos. Phobos, which means alarm or fright, be afraid, exceedingly fear, terror, you know? So it says to be afraid exceedingly, you know? So us knowing the terror of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, you know, because of stories like that, you know? We persuade men, you know, that's why we do the highways. That's why we do these shows and we go on the highways and byways and we teach, you know, to persuade men to repent from their sins. So they don't reap the same judgments like this man, a Khan got. But we are made manifest unto the most high. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Right. So that way you make the you make sound decisions and don't make decisions that are, de that are detrimental to your life and to your livelihood, man, you know. You know, that's why when you read Philippians 2 and 12, you have to work out your fear with your own self. <laughs> you work out your fear, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, this is Philippians 2 and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. You know, so not because not don't obey just because there's an elder among you or there are other brothers around. You know, you obey when no, no when nobody's around, you know, because that really shows who you are. You know, that really shows the true nature of the man is how you conduct yourself when no one is looking. It says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, you know. With fear, meaning reverence and trembling, man, like meaning you're shaking every everything, every move that you make, everything that you say, everything that you do. You are afraid of making the wrong move in the sight of the Lord, man. Because any small inconsistency can mean, really mean death, you know. That's the consequence behind a lot of, most of the things that we doing, that we doing is truth now, man. You know, the Lord isn't weakening at us, you know. The Lord isn't going to beat us with a few stripes. We know what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do, you know. So in that case, the Lord isn't going to pony punches with us, man. You know, and that should, that should, and you should be fearful, man, you know. Every time a brother uh, does something wrong, every time I do something wrong, you know, 
Every time a brother, you know, I see a brother get judged for something, I am afraid, you know. Every time you make a decision, scripture should pop in your head, man. Every time that, you know, that you're put in a situation where, damn, you're about to go off, scripture should pop in your head, man. The spirit should be rebuking you, you know, at every turn. And if it's not, there's something seriously wrong with your spirit, man. There's something that the Lord doesn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't, you know, something doesn't um, jail right with the Lord, man, you know. So we have to work our salvation with fear and trembling, man. And if you fear, you'll have faith. And if you have faith, you will fear, man. Those two are interchangeable and go hand in hand, man, you know. You know, so that, that's all I wanted to say, brothers. I can I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone and well, and salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word and truth in its sincerity and fear. Shalom.